It's swarm season in Kentucky, and this is the prime time of the year that lucky beekeepers can create the optimal environment to capture free bees. Hey friends, it's Barbara Sue at Kowalski Mountain and welcome back to the homestead. Now if you've been following along with our off-grid homesteading journey, you'll know that our bees did not do so well this winter. Out of the, I think four hives we went into winter with, only one survived and it was a really weak colony. They've held on, they're still with us but they're not doing amazing. Now beekeeping is a pretty expensive hobby and it's so disappointing when your bees die or worse yet, you watch them swarm and leave. So as a way to get free bees, we try to catch swarms. Now this is the best time of the year to do it and we have traps all over the farms in hopes that we'll catch a few colonies. Now this is kind of a wait and see game. We set the trap, we put some lure in it and we let nature take its course. So Philip just called me and told me to get the bee jackets and the camera that there's a swarm. And if you've been following me on Instagram, you know that our bees did not do well during the winter and we're trying to catch swarms to replace them. Now I'm already super nervous to work with the bees because the last time I did, I got stung three times, and one of the times was on my face, and my face swelled up really, really bad. And I'm kind of nervous. I do not want that to happen again. So here we go. Let's catch a swarm. So what do you need me for? Uh, I thought you might want to document it, but I was gonna. Oh good, document. I I've got document. <laughs> You've got document? Yep. You're done, you're good? Yep, I'm 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 good with that roll. Alright. Okay, so what I'm looking at. Well, the first two hives, this hive, the second one in, I had a queen. My only colony that survived the world. And then I took the queen out and put her over here, hoping that they would make another queen. So there's been very little activity over here because she really hadn't been producing very much anyway. And, and this was over a week ago, and I'm getting a lot of activity on the bottom of that hive. And the queen might have went back. Uh, and now I've got a swarm that has come in and moved in. Now I've checked my other hives, and we're getting some poking and prodding at those, but nothing like this. So this is an actual swarm that has come in, and it looks like they're moving in to stay. And as far as I'm concerned, that's the best kind of swarm that just moves in. Yep. Oh, I see the queen too. You need to grab her. Uh, I'm not, I can't do nothing with her. You can't put her in a, you don't have a... Why should I bother? To make sure so she stays in that box? The queen is actually right up in this upper corner right here. And I think I can zoom in. But if you trap her, then they will definitely stay. Oh, they'll stay. Alright, so I'm going to try to hold this as steady as possible. But I saw where she went in. And the other hive is pretty active too. That's a really good thing. Okay, so I'm right in the entrance of the hive and I'm not getting bumped. Which that's like a pre-warning to uh, back off. Oh, there she is. All right, so the queen, she's... Moving up this outside edge. Yep, there she is. We'll be able to poke, point it out when we slow the video down later on. I have my finger in front and it blurs up. You don't want to trap her and put her inside? Nope. They're going to stay. How do you know? Because 
they've got plenty of space in there. There's already drawn comb. They'll do just fine. I, I guess I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that they will agree to stay, truthfully. Yep. Some of them are fighting down below. All right, so I'm gonna try to take a picture once I see that queen pop out again. Now what we also need to check is that hive in the back and see if they vacated. The uh, oh, tree. No, no, that's yesterday. This just popped up today. Oh, there she is. She's on the bottom. There's, there, wow, there might be multiple queens. I need to watch her. Crap, if there's multiple queens, I do need to get one in a clip. Yeah. Some of them got resources on their legs already as well. That really wouldn't be surprising if there's more than one queen. My shirt comes up on my back, you need to let me know. I don't need to be surprised. I'm not working here. I know, but right now it's down. Check with me. What's weird is I'll see her go in one spot and then pop back out underneath on the other side. If that's the same one. I swear you almost go cross-eyed looking at the thing so long. Yeah, if I, but I've actually used these clips before and they get out. They end up doing propolis in the entrance and they expand it and the queen gets out. So I'd have to put her in a cage. So those monkeys will eat? Yep, those monkeys will eat. So if you're new to beekeeping, swarming is actually a means of reproduction for honeybees. Now honeybees reproduce in two ways. The first way is that they create more bees through the queen who lays eggs and they hatch out more bees. It takes thousands of bees to run a single hive and a worker bee only lives about six weeks so it's really important that they lay a lot of eggs to ensure that the colony will survive. So the second way that bees reproduce is by swarming and the way that they reproduce in that way is they create multiple hives. So when a hive gets too large the worker bees will prepare the queen to swarm and they do a couple things. First they create swarm cells in the beehive to provide a queen for the bees they leave behind. The second thing they're gonna do is they're gonna slim that queen down. Now the queen's whole job in her life is to lay eggs and she's kind of fat. So they slim her up and they prepare her to fly. Now when they're ready, the queen and a portion of the bees will all leave together in a swarm, but they leave a remnant of bees behind to create a second colony. The bees that have left have what they call scout bees, and those bees' job is to find a new home. And until they have a suitable place, the bees will clump together in, in a beard and they protect the queen. And when bees are swarming, they're not nearly as aggressive because they're not defending a home. Like right now, they could be aggressive. We could get stung because they're defending their colony. But when they're swarming, they're a little bit more docile because they don't have anything to protect. Now the bees 
also take as much honey as they can with them in their honey stomachs so that they have food when they get there. Now once the scout bees find a suitable location for the hive, the swarm will relocate and they will continue doing what bees do. They will build honeycomb, the queen will lay her eggs, the bees will forage and collect uh, nectar and pollen and make honey, and they'll do what bees do. And what's happened right now is this swarm, the scout bees, determined that our hive was the perfect home. And I can't agree more. It's so much easier to let them do all the hard work than us to have to retrieve them. So our hope is that they're gonna stay. Now the bees that they left behind will notice right away that the queen is gone. They won't sense her pheromones anymore. And so the swarm cells that the bees had prepared hopefully had the eggs laid in them and they will begin to take care of those eggs and they'll feed those pupa royal jelly. Queen bees live on a diet of royal jelly their entire life and that's what makes them different. That what, that's what makes a queen bee. If they don't have any suitable eggs or pupa in an emergency, they can take any pupa and turn her into a queen. That's not ideal. But when bees are swarming, they definitely prepare the bees that are being left behind to be successful because their goal is reproduction all around and the bees left behind, they want to be successful as well. Now this is swarm season in Kentucky and since our bees did so poorly through the winter, we're hoping to catch some more. So this is super exciting. We're really glad that these bees are here. And so far so good. I have not gotten stung, which I'm really happy about that. Now we actually have swarm traps all around the farm. We have some that are getting a little bit of activity, but nothing like this. So we'll be sure to look at some of those other swarm traps as well. Kyle's able to get a few pictures of the queen. Okay. Yep, matter of fact, she's right there. Did you happen to get oh, any? Oh, there's two of them. Did you get her? I got her. Oh, just one? I got one. Now a hive normally only has one queen and they will actually kill each other to win the spot. Queen bees have a reusable- Vicious females. Yeah, the re <laughs> reusable stingers. So she can sting multiple times. Now, a lot of beekeepers will tell you that a hive never has two queens, but I can bet you they almost all quit looking after they find one. Uh very seldom are you going to find well they're not going to have a, two queens all the time there's certain right. times of the year you will find more than one yes sometimes the queen is old she doesn't have a lot of pheromones she might stay under the wire sometimes they're not uh, sometimes they're virgin queens so having an extra queen is actually really really helpful for our hives that have been struggling because you're not sure our one queen is really doing very well. So we no. could we could replace her. And and see, here's the thing. I've got her clipped. If I find another queen that's in there and I clip her and put them both down, whichever one they migrate to, that's the one that they've accepted. So the other one's just kind of an extra one. So I could actually take her out and put her with another colony. Um, but I have to put her in a cage and they have to accept her. And it really needs to be perfect timing because the other colony needs to be without a queen for at least a couple of days. A lot of beekeeping is just a matter of timing. They're actually doing orientation flight at the back of this hive too. Oh really? Yeah. They're, they're all over. Really curious how many are inside. Yeah, me too. I'm tempted to open it up because that top one's empty anyway. Now beekeepers can simulate swarming by doing what's called splits. When a hive gets very large, beekeepers can manage their hives by separating them into two hives. And the bees will do the same. When they sense the loss of a queen, they will create a new one. And in that way, beekeepers can manipulate 
the reproduction of hives within their apiary without the loss of the bees. Come on, get up and move again. I'm pretty darn sure I saw two. See, and I could actually take that queen and stick her inside the box and they will all go inside the box if that's the one that they've accepted. But it's not uncommon during a swarm to find more than one queen in there. Usually it's the old queen that comes out. I'm surprised you're not wearing your goggles. To see her? Yeah. Well, I'm squinting so much, I'm actually... Mm. I've got to refocus every few seconds. My helper didn't bring my goggles. They were not on, on my the glasses. list. They were not on my required request list. You got what you asked for. That's okay. I'm dealing with it. Oh, that's a big old drone right there. Saw very few drones in this batch. Oh man, look at all that pollen. Yeah. On their legs. Yeah, it's like they've already started collecting resources. really going around that clip very much. Mm -mm. She must not be the chosen one. I don't know. Possible. I'd like to see mm -hmm. at least a few of them around there and then I'll go get my yellow or uh, orange box. If I can get a few nurse bees try to take care of her until I can use her. But I need to confirm that there is another queen first. I'm not going to take her away. They're, they're coming in the back too. Hey girls. Ready? Mm -hmm. Trying to go slow. Yeah? Oh Lord. Yeah, they're here to stay. You get a side shot over here. I can smell the honey coming out of there too. Oh my word. Oh, that smells so good. Wow, they, they are in between every one of those frames that I have down below. Every one of them. Can are you see lots of bees on, in between or is it just yeah. on the surface? No, you can look right down in there and you can see they are filled in. They're packed. Thank you, Lord. They're such tiny bees, too. I actually need to take a shot of this and send it to... Uh, Oh good. I'm gonna slowly put this back down into place. So I wonder why the queen went outside if they've moved in so far like that. Say what? Why the queen is still on the outside. Well, the colony will take the queen to the next location. I got it. So she saying? has probably not yet moved in. Oh. Catching bees in between. Mm -hmm. Alright, that is so good. So good. Alright, we are open for business. Kowalski Apiary. Yeah, right? Not just Kowalski uh, Apiary hopeful. <laughs> I really need to find out if there's another queen up in there. 
I'm, you know what? I think I'm just going to grab my hands. You might want to just film close. I want to try to find her. I should be using one hand. And so doing this, are you videoing? Yes. In doing this, I can actually filter through the colony and look for what I specifically want to find. And then I put them down in there. And it's really a neat feeling um, when, you, when you grab a bunch of bees like this because they're all moving around, plus they're really fuzzy. Yep, not in there either. And so you listen to the, up oh, here's the queen, right here. Now the virgin queen. Knew I had another one. All right. So now I don't know what's inside. I've got two queens, possibly three. And I am out of... I usually carry multiple clips, and that's my multiple. <laughs> I usually carry more than that. So if if I find another, another queen, one, I am going to be extremely surprised. You got to put her in your pocket. What's nice is they actually collected on her. And the other thing too is you put them in here and if they thin down to swarm, a lot of times they can fit through the clip and leave. So right now, I don't know, it looks like they're accepting this one. So I'm going to let her go and see if she goes inside. They don't accept this queen they'll ball her and I don't want that so it'd be best to take her more, take her away there is some fighting going on so I don't know that's kind of weird two swarms fighting for the best box I don't know <laughs> I mean, there's not a lot of fighting, but there's a little bit. I am, I am really tempted to... Yeah, it's got to be two virgin queens. She's not very big at all. So basically what's going to happen is these two queens... Oh, there she is. They're going to go off and mate. And the one that gets mated will actually come back. So I don't know. It's, it's like, well, 50-50. See her? She's now going in. She's now in. Good. Um, it's kind of 50-50. I mean, they're going to go mate and come back. If I, if I leave the one and she don't get mated, then this colony is not going to survive. 
but if I leave the two, it increases my odds, then I can guarantee I get one out of it. I think I'm just going to let her go and see what happens. Ready? Ready. Yeah, definitely virgin queens. So tiny. She's right here. And they're not bawling her. A lot of times you'll see they're tending to her. Right here. <laughs> Open up my. I should have. I should open up my other box first. Well, if they're not mated, they need to be free so they can do that. Well, they will. Mm -hmm. But if I keep put them in a place, then they'll go back to that place. Mm -hmm. She comes back out on Clipper mm -hmm. again. Undecided. I mean, really. Because mm -hmm. there's a chance she'll come back to the wrong hive as well, and then they'll ball her. They won't let her in the gate. She's underneath. There she is. Come on. There we go. Alright. Let's get into that hive. And now this is where some fighting might go on. No. She went back. There to tend to him. I didn't tend to him at all. Nose and butts were in, and that's it. She went back. That makes a lot of sense. There's a wasp in the bottom of this next frame. Come on up. Come on up. Hotel's open for business. No. No wasp nest started. There are bees in here though. Let's see what I got. Are you wanting to film? Yeah, just make sure. Let me know when. Okay, go ahead. It's odd they're over here on this back side. Yeah, this is probably my original plan. She just stayed. Yep. Hey, she came back. All right. I'm gonna leave her. Leave her be, because there'll be a lot of fighting. Good. So we've got two colonies. Well, let's just say one for sure, another potential, and then we have one in the tree in the back mm -hmm. that all I need to do is cut the tree down, and then we can relocate the whole colony. So we're good. Open for business. Two hives. Yeah, I wish I got my marker. I'd tell which one actually comes back. So she went in as well. It'd be nice to get back in here. And I live all kind of migrated in too. You see that? Yeah. There was a ton of bees inside as it is. That's nice. Good. Done for now. Now, if you want to learn more about swarming and how queen bees are created, I have a couple of really cool blog posts on the blog, KowalskiMountain.com. I'll be sure to put the links down below. Now, we'll keep you updated on the status of our swarm, and fingers crossed they stay and they become a permanent part of the Kowalski Apiary. Now, these two swarm traps have been showing a little bit of activity. You'll notice there's just a few bees coming in and out of these traps. We've been watching these for a couple of weeks in hopes that that's going to increase. Now, Philip, to my knowledge, has not been in those boxes to really see the extent of what's in there. 
but it's encouraging that they've been coming back so consistently. Well, this is encouraging. There's actually a little bit of action around this one too. Now I'm sure you can't see that because this camera doesn't zoom as well. Let me see if I can get it with my phone. Oh, that looks like a wasp. That's not a bee. Now that is a bee that's going into the entrance. That larger creature is a wasp, not a bee. It's actually going right into the entrance right now. Everybody's looking to survive. Now I have to admit, I wasn't sure that he would catch bees in this hive. Mostly because it is so high in the air. Now I haven't actually talked to him about it, but I suspect he did it because this part is on a slope. So even though to me it's high in the air, coming off the back of this hill, it's really not that high. So if the bees fly across that field, it's kind of in their line of flight, even though it's so high in the air here. Now the next one I want to show you is I'm really excited about. Let's go check it out. Now of all the swarm traps on the property, I have to tell you this is my favorite location. I just think it's so picturesque over here. I love all the rocks and even the dead tree stump I think is a little bit charming. Now we've seen a little bit of action around this hive. Not much, but a little bit and it's been steady. I've been over here a couple of times and I've seen a little bit of activity, but never a lot. So we haven't peeked inside, but we're hoping that a colony decides to move in. Oops, there's a bee right there. Hope you can see him. Let me use my phone to get closer. Now that's a wasp. You don't really want that. Not a bit of activity since I got out my phone. Now to show you this next warm trap. I'm going to suit up. Now at this colony, there is actually a colony of bees in the tree. So it's a feral hive. Now it's a hollow tree and chances are, and of course we don't know, but chances are they're our bees. We've had bees here for about two years and there did not used to be bees here. So this is an area that we walk through quite a bit and there were not bees here in the past. So chances are these are our own bees that flew away and they are in this feral hive and they're quite comfortable. They have not even tried to budge out of the hive, but let's go look at it. So you can see our swarm trap. Now that we've put the fence up, I actually really hate walking through here because this is a major traffic lane for the bees. They go right across here, out into the field is their major traffic lane. And I don't walk around in my bee outfit, so it makes me a little nervous. Let me see if I can get some closer video for you. Now this is the hollow in the tree. And you can see that this is extremely active. Those bees are super comfortable. They don't look like they're coming out. 
Now this hot, this tree has um, like some dead down here at the bottom. So this tree will eventually have problems anyway. So Philip, he may cut this down. Um, we have quite a few videos on Facebook of him doing bee retrievals, a really cool one from a cactus. And I highly recommend that you check that out. Now, if you look at the swarm trap, there's zero movement around that. They are quite happy in their tree. Now, Roxy's no dummy. She knows to stay away from the bees because she doesn't like to get stung either. As always, friends, we really appreciate you watching. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, hit that button. We'd love you to be a part of the Kowalski Mountain family. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.